Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems not. Hello everyone. Green Army here. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today I've got a Warhammer 6 Delta build guide for you all. Let's dive right in. I think this one's going to be a little bit longer than most of my videos, so uh, no time to waste. We've got the Warhammer 60. We're assuming that we've already chosen that we want the Warhammer 60. Now we're going to go through it from top to bottom, see what we like about it, see what works on it, and, uh, and build up the mech the way I played it in the video. I'm going to start. We've got nine energy hard points. We see we have some decent quirks here. We've got some structure quirks pretty much throughout the entire mech, except for the head. PPC velocity plus 10 and energy range plus 10. We can take a look at the mobility here. We've got pretty standard mobility. Actually, this is exactly the same as the mobility for pretty much every other 70 tonner, except for the, uh, what's it called? The summoner has much better mobility than this. And the grasshopper is moderately better. So if you want a 70 tonner with more mobility, you might go with one of those mechs instead. From a mech philosophy standpoint, once we take a look at this, we see what really stands out to us. So I kind of went over briefly what I saw, uh, but there are some things that make this mech fairly unique. Nine energy hard points is something that actually a lot of Intersphere mechs do not get. They're actually uh, very limited and it's a rarity. So that's one of the things that make this mech very special. Nine energy hard points is a sweet spot for Intersphere mechs because that is the ghost heat limit for uh, both large lasers and medium lasers. So if you wanted to max out on both large lasers and medium lasers of any variety, nine is the most you could carry. Hypothetically, you could get a larger alpha without ghost heat if you had 10, because you could put something like ER small lasers or something on it as well. Uh, but we're gonna ignore that for now. Uh, nine is the most we get in any IS chassis and uh, the Warhammer's got it. Other IS mechs other than the Warhammer that have Nine energy hard points are the Thunderbolt Top Dog, which is also very good at a 65 tonner. The Black Knight, which I, ha I think has two variants with nine, but it might only have one. Uh, and I think the Hunchback 4P is the last one. So really only four other mechs, four mechs total, that have uh, this nine energy, sweet, nine energy hard point sweet spot that the, uh, the Warhammer 6 Delta gets. And compared to the other ones, the Top Duck has pretty good mounts, but uh, the Black Knight is terrible, and also the Top Duck being a hero mech means that it is not free to play. So all in all, the uh, the average mobility of, uh, of this mech, right above 65 tons, and the much better hardpoint location than the Black Knight make this almost the perfect heavy for IS Laser Vomit. I might mention that the Hunchback 4P, while it does have 9 energy hard points, is not really viable if you want to get the, uh, the 57 or, or 60 energy alpha on it. I don't, I don't even know if it's possible, if I'm, if I'm being totally honest with you. I don't know if you could get 3 large lasers and 6 mediums in, it in any reasonable way. So that might even just be out of the question, although that mech does have uh, some pretty nice quirks and good hard points on it for the most part as well. So if we take into account everything in totality, we've got good structure. We're aiming for a high alpha energy build because the hard points are great and because that's what we've uh, we've got hard points for. We've got decent mobility, which means we're going to be able to peek and poke with our high, en high energy alpha build. And we've got a little bit extra range. We know we're going to generate a lot of heat. And we also know because it's an entry build, we're generally going to have a little bit more capacity for engine than we would in uh, a DACA mech, which typically uses a lot of its tonnage just to get weapons on it. Because lasers are so, uh, so light, we aren't really going to have too much of a problem there. Now I just want to point out, I usually play this mech the way I have it built out for Faction Warfare. Because of its speed, its ability to get into range, get to a gate, reinforce fights quickly. It's got a high alpha, and it's got a 
a really nice kind of mid-range, uh, even at me, even like a long to mid-range, it can it can go toe to toe with plan uh, high alpha laser builds, and that makes it kind of unique compared to the, uh, the previous build, which might mostly have focused on LPLs and regular mediums before uh, large lasers got a little bit of a buff and uh, PR mediums came into the game. So this will give us also the uh, it'll it'll allow us to play a tactic where. Without reinforcing, if we die early on a wave, you can actually drop this mech second in faction warfare, and usually get some some decent damage trading without fully engaging, fully committing our mech uh, to uh, a wave reinforcement. That might not be a great idea. So let's jump over to the mech lab and, uh, and see how we can kit this out. I'm gonna start. I know I need about eight points in the head. That's pretty typical for what I run. I'm actually going to put in some back armor first, probably more than I need. I usually run about six in, uh, in the current meta. You have a lot of machine gun lights running around. You also tend to get hit by strikes pretty consistently. So I run a little bit high, um, usually six in the side torsos, uh, sometimes eight in the CT, but I'm going to run six here and throw the rest in the front. We are going to max all those as is normal. Um, I want to max the arms because believe it or not the arms actually do get shot off in this they they work as decent shields And let's see where we can get the legs on in uh, a kind of kind of even point Even tonnage point So something like that Let me get an extra point there So I do want to point out to you that having just looked over this, I actually realized that I could get Light Pharaoh on this for free. So that's already set here on the build that I played in the, uh, the video that this build is from. I actually didn't have Light Pharaoh on it, so this will allow me to uh, change a couple things up once I uh, I get the money to uh, to do it. It'll, I'll show you that when I get to it. So we've got the, the three laser hard points in the left torso. Again, those are all fairly high mounted. Can kind of see here on the edge that's why i'm pointing over here um these three are are fairly close to the cockpit they're not at the cockpit but they're they're fairly high and i'm gonna stick my three large lasers in there just so they're all clustered together if we choose to alpha the three large lasers together because again we are going to have a little bit longer range than with any of our mediums in these large lasers then i'm going to make sure we've got all our ear meads And I am just going to fill this with a few heat sink. Now I want some before I get the engine in. And we'll see what kind of engine we can stick in it. Now I do run an XL in this build. So I've got an XL 325 right here. I'm going to dump that in. That gives us three extra slots for heat sinks. And I've got three tons left over. So let's get a couple more heat sinks in there. And we're going to add a little armor. Now again, this is going to be a little bit different than how I had it built before. Uh, because I didn't realize I had Light Pharaoh on it. So I'm actually going to leave that tonnage open. For now, because this is more true to how I, how I had run it before. The only difference is that I didn't have Light Pharaoh on it. In that video so with the standard it looked more like this or with the the standard armor it looked more like this that's pretty close and i'd probably pull a little bit more out of the head for legs you don't really get legged in this mech um you don't really get headshot either so it's really up to you again you can run uh run the the light pharaoh on this but uh I'll, I'll come back to that later this is how i was running it in the video so this is my uh my build this is uh about how i'd set up this mech we've got a, a 57 alpha over here 1.13 heat management which is really solid uh it seems like it's a little bit low i promise you it's not that bad once you get in a game you've got plenty of heat capacity uh pretty good dissipation 
it's really just that low because you've got a lot of energy you have available to fire at the same time. And the goal with that is, again, you're really just playing to peak, poke, recover, and then repeat. So you just want to peek out, take your poke, recover quickly, and then do it all over again. From here we can go into skill tree. I'm going to tell you there, there are a few nodes that I'm going to avoid in the skill tree first. Um, just nodes that I am not going to prioritize. So if I have a choice, I'll take something else over these nodes. And those are cooldown and the firepower tree, speed retention and torso pitch and the mobility tree, hard break as well in the mobility tree, and I've got shock, absorb shock absorbance in the survival tree. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna end up hitting some of these. I just want to point out that if I can, I will avoid them, and that's gonna affect some decisions we make later on. The first thing I'm going to prioritize is heat gen. And again, I'm just going to go through these in order that I would get them as I'm going through healing a mech for the first time. I just want to get all the heat gens. Again, we're we're a very hot build, so the cooler we can run or the, the cooler we can cool down after we shoot an alpha, uh, the more effective DPS we're going to have. I actually don't need that cooldown. Remember, we aren't prior prioritizing cooldown. We're actually going to want to avoid it if we can. We're going to grab all the heat gens. Then we're going to go into auxiliary. You could actually get these first, but I think uh, spikes and cool shots are probably the best way to spend nine nodes. In, uh, in the skill tree right now, especially if we're talking FW. It could be a little bit different for uh, some competitive modes, uh, AP8. You may not go into uh, go into strikes, but uh, for the most part, yeah, strikes and cool shots, always a gimme. Nine points, best nine points you can spend. From here, we're going to go into operations. Again, the cooler we are, the higher our DPS. The more often we can shoot, the more often we can do damage. I mentioned I'm, I'm avoiding speed retention where possible, so you could take the speed retention instead of this improved gyros, the speed retention instead of this hill climb. Now this hill climb or this improved gyros is really up to you. Uh, I, I prefer hill climb on mechs without jump jets just because I like being able to walk up a steeper grade when it's possible. So really up to you. I prefer hill climb. Go for improved gyros if you want to. And then we're going to make sure we get these last two cool runs down here. Uh, third thing I'm going to do, I'm going to prioritize laser duration. So we're actually going to change some things up here. Even though I've, I've already filled out this tree, I decide I want laser duration as my third priority. So I'm going to take those four nodes, the range and the three laser duration nodes. Now, I told you I was going to avoid cooldown, so I actually have an option now, now that I've got this range node in here, that I can choose between this cooldown or this range. So I'm going to take that range node instead and take off that cooldown. And remember, I can do that without touching any of the heat gen nodes. So I've still got all my heat gen nodes that I prioritized earlier, and now I've changed things around a little bit to take a range instead of a cooldown, and gotten my laser durations. At least the three. I don't usually go for the four. I don't think it's worth picking up these two cooldown nodes, which again, I think are jump nodes. A range node, which is a fine node, but uh, not a priority uh, for this laser duration. I'd rather spend these four nodes somewhere else, but that's going to be up to you. You see, we are going to have a few nodes later on. You know, once once you decide uh, the things that, you know, where am I at now? I'm at 62. If you decide of these next 60, or what, it, what is it? Um, 29 nodes that I'm about to spend, if you would rather spend those in that last laser duration for four nodes, then four nodes getting that last laser duration out of the 29 we have left, go for it. But I would rather spend that on survival and mobility. And we, I'm not going to put anything in sensors, I don't think it's necessary. We don't have jump jets, so that's not necessary. Mobility and survival. Now I'm going to start, I'm just going to take some of the easy skeletal density nodes because we can double dip because we have structure quirks on this mech. So when you take defensive nodes like skeletal density on a mech with structure quirks or armor hardening, 
excuse me, or armor hardening on a mech with armor quirks, you actually get the added bonus of 3.1% of the base structure. At least when we're talking about skeletal density, you get 3.1% of the base structure plus the quirk structure. But actually, it adds up. It takes both the quirked amount and the base amount and gives you 3.1% of both of them. So you're, you're double dipping, you're, uh, you're cheating the system a little bit, but it's built that way. So whenever you have defensive nodes, take the core, or whenever you have defensive quirks, rather, take the corresponding defensive nodes. That'll help you out pretty well. And those are just the easy uh, delta density nodes that I can get to. So we're going to go over here to mobility. And for a fast side peeking mech, I'm going to look at my kinetic burst first. So I'm going to pick up this core kinetic burst. Now from here, you've really got a lot to play with. So you've got 10 nodes left. I'm going to spend a little bit in survival, a little bit in mobility, and I'm probably going to go back into auxiliary to get that last uh, strike node as well. So we're going to come down here. I like anchor turns and I like torso speed. So even though we have to go to through two hard breaks, I don't need the torso pitch at all. And I want this hard break, or I want this anchor turn. So I'll, I'll take these two hard breaks in order to get down the uh, the second anchor turn in torso speed. Because those are going to help us, again, peak, poke, recover, repeat. It's going to help us get through that cycle a little bit faster, take a little bit less damage, be able to turn out of, uh, of enemy laser vomit a little bit faster by uh, taking this mobility tree. Let's see, we got... Five nodes left. So I'm going to hit these four nodes. Super easy. Get a reinforced casing, two armor hardenings, which is fine. Uh, we're not double dipping on the armor hardenings. We get this extra structure node, and the armor isn't bad. Um, armor is always solid, even if you don't have defensive quirks to uh, double dip on. We're going to take those. We got one node left over. I'm going to come back over here. It's really your choice if you want the cool shot cooldown or the enhanced spotting. Uh, really up to you. I'd say this is a judgment call. Either way, if you got one node left and you're already in auxiliary, I think I like enhanced spotting better. I think you can just avoid the cool shot cooldown by uh, by uh, marshalling when you use your cool shots a little bit better. If you uh, if you use your first cool shot early and you're able to break contact a little bit, you get three four alphas off early, and then you can kind of ride your heat a little bit. It's going to come back up before the end of the fight as long as you. Uh, you play, you play safe and uh, don't die too early, but it's definitely it's definitely an option. If you want it that little bit faster, you can take it, but that's my 91 nodes. So just to go over the pros and cons of this build a little bit, it's going to run hot. You're going to have about two alphas, so you get to red line on your heat bar. Um, you'll have three with your cool shot. And if you want to override, you can get that fourth in and uh, a little bit over your heat bar. Actually, you're going to go way over your heat bar if you drop that fourth. And uh, just override a little bit, get back into cover, hit your override again, shut down. Uh, You've got enough structure that it's actually, it's not going to be a big deal if you uh, you take a little bit of structure damage. And structure means so little right now with the machine gun lights in the game. That uh, this extra structure is really just heat capacity. So use this override on this mech. This isn't like clan laser vomit. It's not like a hunchback 2CA where you just overheat and pop. It's not like a light mech a laser vomit where you're just going to overheat and pop. This mech can, can take a little bit of overheat damage. So don't be afraid of that. Um, you've got a high alpha, at least for IS. You've got 57, um, which is almost the highest you can do with IS laser vomit. You might be able to do a little bit better with like an Annie, dual heavy goss, uh, four, four to six medium lasers. I don't even know if it can do six medium lasers. Um, but that's also going to be shorter range. It's going to be longer cooldown time when you're cycling on those mediums on six, you know, on an Annie. It's going to, uh, it's going to be longer between shots anyways, so your DPS is actually probably going to be pretty similar. The difference between this and something like that is obviously the armor is a lot different. The hitboxes are a lot different. But also your mobility is a lot different, so I wouldn't I wouldn't take it out. It's uh, it's definitely just a, a different kind of playstyle. 
you're talking about a, a good range, 450 optimal, again, talking about trading in, in clan ranges. Now that we've got all those range quirks in, we can check out. We've got these uh, large lasers, which reach out to 450 plus 90, so that's almost 550. And ER mediums, which run uh, almost 450. That might even be a little bit, that's actually quite a bit over 450. For 450 to 550 trade range, really solid for an IS, an IS uh, laser vomit. We're also going 75. You could take speed tweak. You know, those optional nodes are in there. I wouldn't fault you if you took speed tweak. You can easily get this going 80, even 85. Uh, you know, I've got this extra tonnage now. All this extra leg armor, a little bit extra head armor. You can even strip some out of the arms. You can easily get this going as fast as you want. We'll get into that in a little bit. You have plenty of speed for CW already at 75. You have the engine desync now, so the big engine isn't as high a priority. But you've got you've got some things to play with. One of the big cons of this mech, a lot of people will tell you not to play XL. Never play XL and everything. Um, I think this mech is fine in XL. You're going to be side poking. You're going to be top poking a little bit. Um, but in this mech, you're using cover as your armor. You want to be standing behind a rock, stand behind a building, stand behind something that some enemy will, will shoot at and it won't hit you. It'll hit the object instead. You know, your your laser burn times aren't as long as clans. So if you can get like a, a quarter second lead, you can get a burn on quarter second earlier than, than a clan mech on the other side when you're playing CW or any mech when you're playing quick play. That half second earlier means you're going to be pu pulling off faster, you're going to be back into cover faster, and their lasers are either going to go in your arm when you twist out or into a building. One of the strategies to play in XL, you have you have two sides to play with. You know, don't always get hit on the side on the on your left torso. If you want, if you're starting to get low on your left torso, your armor's getting low. Start peeking on your right. Pose your right first, and most of the time, um, that right torso will get shot out first if that's what's uh, that's what uh, pops out first, and that's going to take most of your burn, even if your left torso is is already low. Make sure you're twisting, that's going to help you uh, survive this XL as well. You're going to have better burn times in clan. I kind of already went over this. Better burn times, you're going to have more successive alphas than a clan mech, meaning that you can fire those four alphas if you want to. Uh, two alphas is easy. The third one's going to be a cool shot or a shutdown. And the fourth one is a cool shot and a shutdown. But you can get four alphas off in a row and uh and burn through pretty much every mech that's it's almost 60 points in alpha so that's you're just short of 240 points for uh for four burns in this which you can do one right after another and i want to stress you want to peak poke recover repeat so after every alpha you want to recover a little bit you know take a minute because these don't cycle that quickly take just a minute just to recycle your your weapons even if it's just twisting out that's fine take a minute get back Fire your weapons again. Now I'm going to go into some, some alternate builds for uh, for this mech. We're just going to switch a couple of things up. Um, see what else we can do with this basic template. And obviously I've got this extra tonnage to play with. So the first thing I could do is up the engine. I'm not going to do that, but I promise you, you can get to around, uh, you can get to a 335 easy. 340 is a little bit tougher, but uh, you can do it if you want to strip enough. These legs don't usually get hit. I don't usually get headshot. So stripping a bunch of armor out of the legs, even bring these down to 40. If you want to bring the arms down to 42, if you're playing it right. You are going to learn, lose the arms uh, while you're playing this mech, but you can bring these arms down to 40 and not lose a whole lot. So you can bring this up to a, a 340 engine cap if you want to, but uh, 335 is probably safe if you want the standard kind of configuration that I've laid out here. Um, next thing, if we want to Drop some heat sinks. We can just drop two heat sinks out of here. Then we've gotten rid of this uh, light pharaoh that we had on earlier, which is the build that we've got. So that's that's my standard build is with the light pharaoh. Um, we're gonna drop endo steel on it. That gives us uh, almost six tons to play with. I'm gonna make that an extra half a ton by stripping the legs a little bit. Let's see how far we have to do it. I think it's right. Oh, 45. Yep, 45. So that's totally comfy. If you want to strip some out, of the, some out of the head to do that, a couple out of the arms to get a little more on the legs, you can. But I promise you're going to lose the arms more often than the legs. So uh, leaving the legs a little like this is probably not going to be a problem. And with that uh, with that six tons here, 
and really easily just go to a light engine. Exactly six tons. All we got to do is put on endo, drop a little bit extra out of the legs, and we get a light engine. So if you prefer the light engine, oh, the two heat sinks as well. Um, just do that. You can get a light engine pretty much for free. Again, it's really up to your playstyle. If you want that extra safety, go for it. It is going to hurt your heat dissipation if you uh, you lose one of these sides here. But uh, it's an option. An option if you want to go for it, go for it. I'm all for it. Um, the other build that you can run with this, we're going to go back to an XL. We can pretty much, oh, actually we can for free at this point. We have exactly six tons. Uh, large pulse lasers are exactly two tons more than large lasers. And we've got three large lasers here. So instead of the light engine, we can go to three large pulse. That's going to give us a faster recycle time. We can fire uh, more times in quick succession. So instead of like a peak poke, recover, repeat, you can drop like two alphas, then recover, then do it again. Um, that's totally up to you. I usually go with medium lasers because they also have the faster recycle time. Um, the ER mediums actually line up better in range than the medium lasers, but I find the medium lasers line up better in, uh, in cooldown than the ER mediums. So that's a playstyle thing. It's going to be up to you. Uh, one or the other. I've got a small laser here by accident. But three large pulse lasers, XL325, and six mediums. And finally, the other build that you'll see a lot of people running is you can do either one of these, drop a medium, and throw a heatsink on it. Um, this is probably one of the most common builds. Maybe without the XL, maybe you'd go back, back down to large lasers, ER mediums, and throw the light engine in it for this this kind of common build. But the five medium laser with the the extra heatsink is, is fairly common. I don't like it. I think if you've got the nine hard points, you gotta use the nine hard points. It's so rare. You're, you're giving up so much. Why would you do it? I don't know. People do. Um, I'd say if you wanna do that, run a grasshopper, but that's, that's going to be a uh, player preference on that one. So these are all of my, uh, my build alterations for, uh, Warhammer six Delta. I'm going to build this for you again, quick and, uh, hope to see you all on the battlefield.